hey guys this is my second video for YouTube it's the fourth I've done but my first two were just on Facebook so what I want to talk to you about today is summer care for centipede grass in the south okay there's not a lot you're gonna do in the south for centipede grass but here's a few th three things three things I want to talk about one is uh, chemicals and we're not gonna spend a lot of time talking about that because you don't want to put a lot of chemicals on centipede grass period and then mainly you don't want to put them on in summer it's too hot it will damage your grass second thing we want to touch on real quickly is mowing won't spend a lot of time on that and third thing is water that's the only three things you need to really be worrying about right now at this time of the what is mid-july same thing for august and even going into september for centipede grass first thing i want to do i want to show you some pictures of what my grass looked like at the beginning of spring and we're not going to go spend a lot of time on this, but this was uh, the damage I incurred because of thatch buildup when I wasn't uh, practicing good uh, cultivating techniques. So I'm paying the price. I've been doing a renovation, a partial renovation. So I just want you to show them my grass. It's, it's rainy out here. So this beautiful summer day that I've been talking about, all of a sudden it's a cool rainy day right here. But just kind of show the grass right here. Okay, walk along. So this is a pretty big uh, change from uh, what I had, my grass is coming along pretty well, and we'll talk about later on, later on in videos what I've done. Again, it was min minimal chemicals. It was mostly organic hand tools, uh, not power tools, or chemicals. All right, first thing I wanna talk about chemical-wise right now, and this uh, heat we've got, it's not hot right now, but we're gonna have temperatures of, uh, exceeding 100 degrees heat index all week. And so the, you don't need to think about chemicals on your yard. The only chemical I might even possibly think about putting on my yard right now is uh, Imaziquin, which is in a, uh, a product called Image, which I showed you in my last, my only other YouTube video for Kalinga, green Kalinga, which is in the nut seeds family. If I have to go back and do one more application of that, that's probably about the only safe chemical that I would put on my uh, grass right now uh, for the end of the summer, through this whole year. Uh, except later on a pre-emergent herbicide. We'll talk about that come fall for uh, getting prepared for next year. No more chemicals. It's too hot. You're going to burn your grass. Even if it's organic, I wouldn't put any chemicals on this grass. Uh, I, I, don't, I barely put fertilizer at all on my grass or anything else. Okay. Uh, I want to show you something over here. When I do put chemicals on my grass, this is kind of a, get out of the rain over here. This is kind of a rule of thumb of mine. Unless I have more than 50% of my entire turf area uh, embedded with those weeds, I spot spray. And what I mean by that, and I have five uh, gallon backpack, I got backpacks, uh, back backpacks, five gallon spray bottles, all that. But this is what I use. I use a little 32 ounce uh, uh, spray can right here. I put my chemical in, in it, put your water in it first, then mix your chemical. Be careful about 32 right here. First, I was putting third, I was putting water all the way up here, but no, it'll tell you read labels like I always say, stop up here on your water. Then I spot spray. I, it takes a lot more time to look, you can stop, come out here 30 minutes, go back in, go, stop where you uh, start where you stop. That way you know you grass. I can see if there's any insects, any kind of, uh, which I don't, I've never had insect, I've never applied anything for insects in my yard, except one time somebody did free 10 years ago. But other than that, I've never had insect problem. Spot spray, I suggest. Now, this is something I've not used, but I'm going to. I just keep forgetting about it, and I didn't know about it till this year. This is a blue spray uh, dye. Now, this is awesome. I can't wait to use it if I can ever remember to do it. What this does is, is you just put a couple, a little, few little drops of it inside whatever you're spraying, and it will show you where you applied it on your grass. That way, you don't miss spots. If you're trying to get something to make your yard greener, you don't have green, 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 and light green and all this, or you're not gonna miss spots on your herbicides and have weeds that you forgot. And then this will go away, uh, I guess in a few days. I've not used it yet, but I can't wait till I will next time. So forget chemicals right now, it's too hot. In Louisiana, centipede, nothing else needs to go except maybe a mazaquin if you have nut sedge or calingua. All right, second thing, mowing. I showed you, showed them my little Fiskars mower. This is what I show you. I've been mowing on my manual mower right here. It's been doing pretty well. Again, my yard, it has had one mowing with a regular, I got a yard guy to come in only because my grass was so high. It was a little high for these Fiskars mowers to mow well. It was wanting to lay down. The one, uh, one of the few drawbacks of these mowers, I guess these mowers is um, they can't, if the grass gets too high, it'll want to just knock it over, push it down instead of cut it. So I got one time a, guy, a lawn guy to come in and do it. Other than that, I've been doing hand tools uh, pretty much chemical free 
mowing with my uh, fist guards over here. Um, remember, I only mow a third of a uh, grass blade at a time. If you need to just pick up a grass blade, measure with a measuring stick and say, okay, this is six inches. I only take off two inches at the most. And if you have to come out here every three days and mow it, that's okay. Try to just only top it off a third of the blade. Now, one thing you want to change right now, one thing that's different though because of the heat is you want to mow a little bit higher, okay? Because that's going to help with, uh, especially if you got dragging, you'll have an irrigation system. I'd bump it up like a, maybe a half an inch, a fourth of an inch or something like that. I'm going to, I'm bad about mowing too high. It's caused my problems that I've had, but I'm going to bump mine. Um, I like to keep my grass at three inches, which I, I think with centipede, you need it 1.5 or 2.5 inches high at the most. So I'm going to keep mine 2.5 or 2.75 inches on my height. Um, and I think that's all I need to tell you about that. Last thing I need to tell you about is water. Okay, right now it's sprinkling. I gotta take that into account. You need one inch of water per week, okay? That didn't mean come out here, uh, put one inch of water uh, from your sprinkler system and the, it, when it rained two days before. No, you, won't, you don't want to do that. Cumulatively in total, one inch. All right, so I wanna show you something first. I bought these from True Value Hardware. They're little rain gauges. And what I do is I put these around my yard once or twice just to get an idea. If you have an irrigation system, sprinkler system, what you want to do is put this in between, halfway in between two sprinklers head, sprinkler heads. Run your sprinkler, sprinkler for 30 minutes and then see, like if it says a half an inch or 40 minutes, but I used it. If it says you got a half an inch of water, then you know if it does not rain that week, you need to run your raw sprinkler system 80 minutes because you need at least an inch. If it's really hot and really dry, uh, above 100 on multiple days, you may need two inches of water in your grass. But this gives you an idea, and you don't want to do it a little bit at a time. You want to come out here once or twice a week and get all your water in. That means on my sprinkler system, I may, I'm going to need to come out twice a week, probably three days in between, and run my sprinkler system about an hour uh, each time, and that's going to give me um, an inch of water, maybe two inches of the pot. One other thing I wanted to show you, and look, water in the morning. Do not water in the afternoon because it's just going to evaporate. It's going to be too hot, uh, and the wind's going to blow it. So you're going to lose most of your water. It's going to be a waste of your money and your time. I keep one of these. I got these at Sunny Pans Eco's. It's a uh, rain gauge, and this tells me just this morning, I don't know if it rained, maybe a little bit yesterday, I've got uh, maybe a quarter of inch of water, and this helps me gauge my water. That way, I'll, I, you don't want to overwater because that's what's causing causing weeds. So you won't show my yard. You won't see weeds in my yard. I do have still a little bit of that clinger that's not died down. Okay, but uh, other than that, your uh, your your weeds are gonna my weeds are generally results in too much water. Uh, if you do water in the evening. Don't do it past 6 o'clock. You need to be done, done with your watering by, I'd say, 6 p.m. Again, it's way better to, to water in the morning, uh, early in the morning. I do mine like 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning because mine takes a while. Another thing, what I do, if you live to water in the morning, uh, early in the morning, I do mine like 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning because mine takes a while. Another thing, what I do, if you live on a slope like I do, I do 20 minutes one zone, Stop it, 20 minutes another zone, stop it, 20 minutes my flower bed, okay? And the reason is, is because I live on a hill on a slope and you can see the water draining down. So if I sat here and, wa and watered my whole, this area right here for a solid hour, half of it would probably be down in the neighbor's yard, down in the gutter, actually throwing water down the drain, literally. It's just gonna go downhill. Water it a little bit at a time, stop, let it soak in, water another area and then come back and water it. Um, last thing I want to say about watering. When it's real, real hot during the afternoon, although I said you don't uh, water generally during the afternoon, you don't, you need to do it in the morning before 9 o'clock. I mean, finish before 9 o'clock. Uh, it is good on a really hot today to do what we call spike it. That means like you don't want to come out here like noon or 2 o'clock, but maybe 4 o'clock. Give it like 10 minutes of water. If you got a sprinkler system, it's real easy. Just turn your sprinkler system on for like 10 minutes and it cools down your grass and your soil so well. Just 10 minutes of watering. That's the only time you want to do a shallow watering like that is just every now and then when it's, uh, or when the temperature goes up to around 90, upper 90s, I say 100s, or heat index, get out here and pop it like 10 minutes uh, during the afternoon. And uh, that's gonna be, that's pretty much it. 
forget about chemicals right now. It's too late. It's too hot for centipede grass in our area. Got 100 degrees coming this week, most of the week. Heat index for sure is already there. Uh, mow it a little bit higher, raise it. Don't cut it uh, off more than a third. Sharpen those blades. If you have a regular lawnmower, that's a big deal. Keep your blade sharp. And uh, water one inch, two inches per week. Keep up with the rain. Keep that into account. Water in the morning and spike it maybe 10 minutes during the afternoon. That's it. And then uh, just kind of do an overview. My yard has come along. It looked like crap. If you saw my uh, first video, well, it was on Facebook, so you probably didn't see it. I don't have that account anymore. But my yard looked terrible. I showed you the pictures in April, and now look, it's coming along. Basically, no chemicals, no power tools. You can do it too. And I, as I next my next video, it's going to be probably in five days or so. I'm going to top dress. The only last thing I'm going to say, real quick, is the only fly on my yard, or the main fly I got to, when it's not as green as it should be. Is, uh, it's not smooth. You got little craters there, and that's because of my thatch that I had to pull out. My thatch built up with my dethatching rate. It left my yard uneven. So I'm going to do a top dressing, and I'll do a video, and I'll show you how to top dress. That's safe to do that this time of year, and I'll do that next couple of days. All right? Thanks for watching. Your kiddos, show your parents if they want a pretty yard. They got centipede grass. Tell them to follow me. Uh, like and subscribe. Thanks for my followers. Peace out.